All right, time for part two of the fuel system for the Turbo LS in this 55 Buick piece of junk. All right, so in part one, we did all the fuel lines, surge tank, fuel filter, pretty much the hard, hard line stuff of it. Now comes part two, wiring. So, because I'm running two fuel pumps, I need two relays to run them. And I could have just, you know, simply bought a couple relays and uh, been done with it. But I like to overcomplicate things sometimes. But actually makes it sim more simple, I think. So I bought one of these, which is a relay slash fuse box. Two relays, two 50 amp fuses on those relay feed circuits or on the on the on those pump circuits and some extra fuses that I'm not going to use. I just want the two relays and the two 50 amp circuits. But it's a neat little thing. I figure I can mount this back in the trunk and uh, just keep them right in the back where the fuel pumps are and just less complicated that way. At least less wiring to run, I think. Shorter wires, at least. So let's go over this, because the first thing I have to do is figure out what's what in this bundle, because as usual, when you buy something like this, um, they don't tell you what anything is on it. So looking at it, I can tell by looking at the back where the wires go into the relays, I can figure out which color is what. These are just four pin relays, it looks like. They're stuck in there good. And yes, four pin relays, not using 87A, because it's not needed. But I'll tell you one thing, what's wrong with that picture? That terminal is recessed. Good thing I took a look because, oof, that relay would not have worked. Now all the terminals are sticking out where they need to be. So now that I've dealt with that fiasco on this thing, I gotta make sure that these are staying seated. Otherwise that relay is not gonna work. On the other side, I'm just gonna push on them all and they all look like they're in there all right. All right. So here's what I can tell looking at the back of these. And relays are simple if you use them. They're awesome. Let's call four terminals. I'm going to have 30. I'm going to have 87. And I'm going to have, what are they labeled on here for the coil? 85 and 88, 85 and 86. Yeah, that's normal. 85 and 86. So, 30 is always going to be your 12 volt in from battery. And this is to go to your device. So, that's going to be a heavy wire. 10 gauge wire, probably are better. 87 is going to be the output. So, this is going to be 12 volt in. This is going to be 12 volt out. Out of 87. So power comes in here, it goes out here, but only if this coil closes a set of points, all right? So these are gonna be smaller gauge wires. 85 and 86 are just for the coil. So one side will be 12 volts, one side will be ground, okay? And when you put 12 volts on and you already have the ground, that'll turn on the coil or if you already have 12 volts and you supply the ground, that'll turn on the coil. When that coil turns on, this power 
will come out of 87, all right? So I know I'm gonna have to supply 12 volts on 30. 87 is gonna go to the positive side of my fuel pump. And then 85 and six are gonna be my control. Now on an LS PCM, it sends out a 12 volt signal. So that means the PCM is gonna send out this 12 volt signal, which means that I need to put 86 to ground permanently. Okay, that way when you turn the key on, 12 volts comes in on 85, closes the contacts on the coil, power goes from 30 to 87 and out to your fuel pump. So just looking at the back here and looking at the, the back of the relays, the pins there, I can already tell that the yellow wires are gonna be my pin 30, 12 volts in. All right, give me a piece of something to write on here. That works. So I know my yellow is gonna be 12 volt battery power. Okay. Then the red wires, which are on 87, jumper over to one side of the 50 amp fuse, and then the output of the 50 amp fuse is red. So the two red wires are gonna be my 12 volt to the fuel pumps. I have two fuel pumps. So each red will go to the positive on a different fuel pump. Now, as far as controlling the coils, we have white wires and black wires. Well, the black wires are ground and they are tied together. So I only have one black wire here. And because I know that the LSPCM is gonna send out a 12 volt signal to the coil, I know I have to ground this permanently. So if, say it was the opposite way, and the PCM sent out a ground signal, you would tie the coil sides on the, the uh, 12 volt coil side permanently to 12 volts, and then the PCM would send out a ground and then close the contacts. This case, the other way around. So I'm gonna mark, put the black wire permanently to ground. And then that means to control the coils and the relays, it's gonna be these two white wires. And I'm gonna use one wire to turn on both of these pumps at the same time. They're not uh, staggered or anything like that. So I'm gonna tie these white wires together and they're gonna go to what would be the green wire on the standalone harness that sends out that 12 volts from the PCM, right? So the white is gonna go to PCM. These green wires are output wires of the other four fuses that I'm not gonna use. All right, so next step is to just extend all these wires. Hold on, my tripper here. Yeah, something there. Uh, extend all these wires. So the two white wires I solder together and solder to a green wire, a long green one, because I just know that green is going to be my trigger from the PCM. The ground wire just ran to a long black wire for now, and we'll ground that. The two yellow wires, which are gonna be hot power in from the battery, used uh, butt splice crimp connectors with uh, heat shrink insulation to attach to two 10 gauge wires that I just happen to have from another harness that go to one, and this will end up going to the battery. And then all that's left are the two red wires. And those are gonna go out to the um, fuel pumps, one on each. So I'm gonna extend those wires. These crimp connectors, and then you hit them with a heat gun, shrinks them right down, gets you a good uh, weather tight connection. And then I'll put shrink tubing over that as well.
All right, so back in the trunk. Figure I would just put this, something like that, run the wires down and spread them around. And uh, yeah, when I'm done, I'll make a, a crude crayon drawing or something of the schematic if you want to see what I did. And I'm just putting this in with little factory shooter screws. Drill a pilot hole and spray these in there because they're free when you part out cars. You find this stuff all over. So why not save them and use them? That's what I say. All right, so I'm in the middle of wiring up this fuse box and ran into something very strange. Let's see if I can do this. You see this big metal bar going across the top here that all the wires are attached to? That's a bus. <laughs> and these two big heavy red wires, these are the relay outputs. They're all attached. <laughs> I've never seen anything like this before. What that means is that both relays are tied together. So I want one relay to feed one fuel pump and one to feed the other fuel pump. The way they made this box, you could pull a fuel uh, a relay out and both fuel pumps are gonna run. This is the strangest thing I've ever seen. So to fix this, I'm gonna cut this bus in half right here. I'm gonna get a Dremel and cut this bar in half and split the outputs so that they're not tied together. That's kind of weird. So, you know, I'll draw you up a schematic and put it in the video on what I'm doing, but I don't know if I would buy one of these. It's just kind of disappointing since it's a neat little box, but I have no idea what they were thinking about when they did this. All right, so I split the bus bar right there. And now my outputs are split. So now this will work. Okay, so with that bus bar split, I now have my relay output split. And I figured out that the left side relay is for the 044 and the right side relay is for the tank. So I dumped, I don't know, two gallons in the tank. I want to pressurize this pump first, the tank, to pressurize my lines and see if I have any leaks on the surge tank side. And then once the surge tank is full of fuel and I think everything's okay there, I'll turn on the 044 and pressurize up to the engine and make sure we don't have any leaks there. Okay, so all the wiring is done. The only wire I have not connected is this one here, which is going to be the from the PCM feed back here to turn on the relays. But... You know, you turn the key on, it only turns on for like three seconds at a time. So I left it disconnected so I can manually turn on these fuel pumps one at a time and pressurize the system. So I'm going to turn on the tank first. Like I said, I think I've got a couple gallons in there. Hopefully that's enough to pressurize this and <laughs> see what happens. It goes nothing. pushing fuel, I can hear it. I hear it filling the surge tank. I may not have enough fuel in the tank because the pump is kind of like but I feel it or I hear it rather pressurizing the lines and pushing fuel into the surge tank. Okay, now the pump is steady. Okay, I feel fuel coming back in the return side. I'm blocking, you don't see anything. Just realized I was completely blocking the camera so you couldn't see anything, but it looks like now I have fuel all the way into the surge tank and returning back to the main tank because the pump sounds steady in the tank. 
So, so far so good. I don't see any leaks. I can hear air. And I figure this must be pressurizing the return line all the way back to the engine as well, doing that. Hopefully I have enough fuel in there. So, I guess I should turn on the 044 next and see what happens. Okay, so I put the fuse in for the 044 pump. Now I'll turn it on and uh, both pumps will be running. Well, you can hear that 044 drag right down when it starts pushing fuel. I think it's working. Look under the car. I don't see anything. I think our fuel filter connections are okay. Let me just go check up at the engine. Engine connections look okay. Now I don't see any leaks. So, all right, I'm going to try to start the engine. I'm going to hook this line right to the battery. Hopefully the battery's got enough juice after sitting for quite a while. And uh, I'm going to see if the engine will start on this fuel system. Cover here that comes with this thing. Cover that up like that. Last connection to make is this green wire that runs to the uh, 12 volt side of the coils on the relays. We'll tie to this wire, which runs all the way to the inside the car. And on the eBay standalone harness, it had a fuel pump relay. There was a green wire attached to it. I cut that wire and tied it into this wire that runs back here. So now the PCM will trigger both relays. So make that connection and see if it still starts. All right, last wire is connected in the trunk. Let's see if it'll start on the, on the fuel pump like it should with the car. I'm getting the car and hit the key. They turned on. Sweet. It works. All right, that is it for the fuel system. It works. And if you listen, you can hear now with the PCM controlling the pumps. Should just turn on for three seconds when the key's on and off perfect so what I'll do is uh, even though I had to modify that silly relay box there 
<laughs> Chinese junk, right? Um, I will draw a quick schematic and at least uh, show you what I did. So if you bought like two separate relays, you could wire it up the same way. You just hang a couple relays back there. Or if you want to buy one of these boxes, you got to split that bus to, to separate the circuits. But I'll put up the diagram now so you can wire up your own. Thanks for watching. One step done. One more to go for turbo. Well, not one more, but you know, we'll do another one. See ya.